Hey guys, what's up? This is Vapor Sean, second half of Vaportron with another Myth Monday. And today, I am going to tackle the idea that it is nicotine that causes cancer. To give you an idea of just how far back uh, we can easily go, uh, just how far back people have known better, I'm going to start with a quote from 1976. Yes, literally 40 years ago. It was said by a professor, Michael Russell. People smoke for nicotine, but they die from the tar. And uh, this is something that um, basically has been known for a long time, as I just stated. Uh, the idea that the nicotine itself is what causes cancer is something that's been going around for a long time. And the actual, the very people are very types of groups that are currently trying to demonize these things are actually the very ones who uh, a few, quite a few years back were trying to dispel this myth themselves. Why were they trying to dispel this myth? Very simple. I'm actually going to read a quick excerpt from an article in Medical News Today from 2005, uh, November 5th, if anyone is curious and wants to try and look it up. There's a lot of other information in the article about uh, things like how men and women have different attitudes towards smoking, things like that. But the part that I'm interested in, and the part that I want to read to you, is people smoke to get the addictive drug nicotine, but the drug alone does not cause cancer. The delivery system, a cigarette full of hundreds of toxic chemicals that are inhaled along with nicotine, does said Miss Reichert, I think it is. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. This misinformation leads many smokers to smoke light cigarettes, thinking they will inhale less nicotine. In reality, smokers tend to smoke more light cigarettes and inhale more deeply to get nicotine from light cigarettes, resulting in a significant amount of harmful chemicals being inhaled. So this is the same myth. The same myth that's currently being used by people to demonize these things is the same myth that resulted in so-called light or mild cigarettes being seen by some people as healthier. No, they were never healthier. Light or mild cigarettes were always just as harmful as the regular ones because of the simple fact that it's not the nicotine that is the problem. It's that simple. Nicotine was never the big issue. Is nicotine a drug? Yes. Can nicotine, like any other drug on the planet, including caffeine, potentially, re re potentially reach toxic levels in your bloodstream? Sure. But like I said, so could caffeine. Literally, it is possible to overdose on anything. Uh, literally, you could drink too much water and die from it. And yes, it has actually happened. Uh, it's somewhat rare, obviously. Uh, usually because of people trying to win some kind of stupid dare or contest or something like that. But the simple fact is, yes, nicotine, like any other drug, yes, it could reach potentially harmful levels in your system. So with this smoking, wherever your nicotine is coming from, even if you're just chewing nicotine gum, yes, you have to kind of be sensible about it. But the idea that it's what causes cancer, no. Uh, like I just read, hundreds of harmful chemicals, dozens of which I've read in other places, are known to be carcinogens. Literally dozens of which are known to increase your risk of cancer are in cigarette smoke. They're not just the fact that they're there in the tobacco. It's the fact that the tobacco smoke is smoke. It's that simple. You're taking a component and you're burning it. And now, I'm, I'm not a chemist, but I knew, do know some basic concepts of chemistry. And I do understand the simple fact that, and this is high school chemistry, combustion is a chemical reaction. It's that simple. When you burn something, that is, in essence, a chemical reaction, which means you get different chemicals than what you started with. To make matters worse with a cigarette, it's smoldering. It's not a complete burn. So you have the chemicals you started with, 
plus new chemicals created by combustion. Some of it is converted into this new garbage, basically, that you're inhaling, and some of it is left behind. That's why you still get nicotine. So it, it, it really becomes a, a sort of a uh, rather disgusting chemical cocktail that you're putting into your system when you're smoking. And that is the mix that causes cigarette smoke to be as harmful and uh, to increase cancer in the way that it does. That doesn't happen with this. And that really is what makes these, that, that really is, is the essence of what makes these safer. This is not combustion. This is evaporation. With evaporation, which is not a chemical reaction, you get the exact same chemicals you started with. Whatever you put into your tank, whatever flavoring chemicals, whatever, uh, whether it be propylene glycol, vegetable glycerin, or both, the nicotine itself, whatever is in the tank, that is exactly what you're inhaling. Unless, of course, you overpower your coil and majorly overheat it. I believe uh, you can go to my uh, Other Myth Monday on formaldehyde for more information on that. But, you know, with that exception, you know, unless, of course, you're overheating it and willing to put up with that nasty, disgusting flavor that I mentioned in the other video, you are getting exactly what you put into it. It's as simple as that. Because it's not a chemical reaction, it's evaporation. And so there's nothing new introduced. So when I do this, what I just inhaled was vegetable glycerin, a tiny bit of propylene glycol, this is Max VG, nicotine, and the flavoring. That's it. Nothing new was introduced because nothing's being burnt. Because I know to keep my wattage or uh, voltage, if I were on a voltage variable, or temperature, which is what I prefer lately, to a reasonable level. It's that simple. And that's where the difference comes in. The idea, like I said, that uh, nicotine, is, or the knowledge that nicotine is not the problem, has been known for at least 40 years. That first quote that I mentioned was back in 1976, so 40 years ago it was known that nicotine itself is not the problem. So why now do we have people trying to say, oh, it's still nicotine, so you're still putting yourself at risk of cancer? Do, do these people not read? Do they not know that we live in the information age? Seriously. This is the information age, people. Pick up a smartphone, or turn on your computer, or grab a tablet, and look things up. And you know what? The next time someone tells you, oh, nicotine causes cancer, I'd actually recommend do exactly that, or say exactly that. Grab your smartphone and look it up. Because people have known for 40 years that no, it is not the nicotine that causes cancer. It is the dozens, and I do mean literally dozens, I believe uh, every number I've seen has been 70 or more of, of chemicals <coughs> in tobacco smoke that are known carcinogens. That is what is in cigarette smoke that causes cancer. Not the nicotine, the tar, and well, you know what? I've, I've already said it enough times, dozens of chemicals. That's the problem with cigarette smoke, not the nicotine itself. So really, this, this isn't a difficult myth to debunk. It's a simple matter of looking back and uh, kind of reminding people, OK, well, if nicotine was the problem, why were light cigarettes not safer? If nicotine was the problem, why were mild cigarettes not safer? Supposedly, there's no less nicotine. At least that was what people believed. If that's the case, why were they not encouraged? Because they're not safer. 
so nicotine was not the problem. It's as simple as that. So, uh, that basically said, and I will be putting the link to this video, or this article, rather, in the uh, description below. Uh, you'll find that down there. Uh, so, with a, another myth, very easily debunked, this is Vapor Sean, second half of Vapor Tron, signing out.